Hey everyone, today we're going to learn how to do a post to an Azure function with a HTTP trigger. And we're going to use OpenAPI to generate some Swagger documentation for us. So we want to start off by creating a new project and we want to select the Azure functions type and we'll just call it sample posting. Now we will leave all these defaults, but take note here, the function type is HTTP trigger with OpenAPI as opposed to just the normal HTTP trigger. So this is the code it gives us. And this is our function, and it looks really similar to what you usually see with a HTTP trigger. Now we also have these open API attributes, and these help generate the Swagger documentation for us. So like a normal HTTP trigger, we've got our get and our post. The request is passing in. Here it's getting the name, and it's trying to get it from the query in case you're doing a get. And then here it gets it from the request body in case you're doing a post. Uh, and then it formats the, the message in here and sends it back. So we're just going to run this to have a look at what that does. And now this is going to give us this URL to go to. And we're going to go to the address it's given us. And here is our Swagger documentation. So we can see that it's a get, it's function one. We go to try it out. It's expecting our name parameter. So I can just put in Rowan and hit execute. And there we go. We've got our response. Now let's look at changing that into a post request. So back in Visual Studio, Let's take a look at this. This is our open API parameter. Now this is what it's doing to take a name in and to tell the Swagger documentation as well that it wants to take a name in. What we want to do is replace that with an open API request body. We've got a content type here, application slash JSON. Now that's the type of content that it's going to be expecting in the Swagger documentation. And it uses a type of to understand what fields it needs to take in. So we're going to use person and that doesn't actually exist yet. So let's generate that. And we're going to go over here and we've got to make this public for Swagger to be able to identify it. And we're just going to have a couple of fields in here. And there we go. That's some extra information we can have a look at. So now we've got a person and the description can be anything really. So we also want to get rid of the get here. And this will tell the Swagger documentation that we want to do a post. If you don't have that in there, it will still try and do a get because the function will actually take in both but we want the documentation to specifically help us do a post in this request. Now we don't actually need name anymore because we're not looking at the query. We're specifically doing a post and we're looking at the request body. We're also going to get rid of the name and we're also going to get rid of this. And for now, I'm just going to leave it as an empty string. So instead of deserializing it to a dynamic, we know it's going to be a person. So what I'm actually going to do is change this to be type person. And I'm specifically going to tell it it's going to deserialize to a person here. And once we've set that up, we can now use this information. So we're going to say hello person.name. And there we go. We'll just fill the information in a bit there. And now this message is re still returned here because we didn't change any of that. So we can just hit go and see what's happened. So with the app running, we can come back here and we can just hit refresh. We didn't close it earlier and the URL stays the same. So now you'll notice it's changed to a post and it's expecting a JSON body in now. So if we try that out, we can now put our things in here. And because we had that type of, this is what it populates this information here with. So we don't need to figure out what the JSON format is ourselves. We can just take what it's given us. Uh, let's just put five and execute. And here we go. Hello, Rowan, you are five years old. And there we go. We've just done a post to an Azure function and we've used the Swagger docs to help us test it out. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and if there's anything else you want to see with Azure Functions, just let me know in the comments below. Thanks very much.